Hey, hello everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in today to the best secrets in science behind growing your business. I am super excited for you guys to hear from Lindsay in just a little bit. Uh, but first, I just wanted to go over a couple quick announcements. Uh, first thing, I wanted to give a shout out to our featured sponsor for this month, Signature Performance. It's because of sponsors like them that we are able to provide these trainings for free uh, online, that where they're accessible, where anyone can get them. So we really appreciate their support and uh, we want to just keep you know thanking our sponsors for helping us make this possible so thank you to Signature Performance for their contributions to the Grow Nebraska Foundation. Also wanted to give a shout out to this month's featured member uh, being a member with us has some great benefits, and this is one of them. Uh, we'd like to rotate through our members and make sure that they get a shout out. So our featured member for this month is Platte Valley Auto. They have locations in Lexington and in Kearney. They've been a member with us since 2020. So thanks to them for uh, being willing to be our featured member and for uh, sticking with Grow Nebraska. Uh, it's super great to have uh, members in all sorts of industries from all over the state. So uh, just Platte Valley Auto, thanks so much for being a member. All right, so I am going to hand over the microphone now to Lindsay Thompson. Uh, so we have, uh, it's, we have the presentation, and then if you have any questions during the presentation, we have a chat feature uh, that's built into the webinar platform here. So if you have any questions at all during the presentation, please drop those in the chat, and we'll answer those live after the, the presentation. So please, if anything pops into your head, don't be shy, put that in there. We love to make sure that everybody is getting out of this session what they want to get out of it. So uh, even if you're afraid that uh, the question might be answered later on, please put that in there so that uh, you know we know that there are going to be questions and uh, hopefully then we can start thinking about how to answer those for you So or how Lindsay can answer those for you. Um, but by all means, if you have any questions about Grow Nebraska, uh, drop those in there too and we can address those at the end. So without further ado, I am going to kick it off with that presentation. I'll see you guys in a little bit.
Hello, and thank you for being here today. I am passionate about working with and supporting entrepreneurs. To me, entrepreneurs and parenting have one thing in common. There is no instruction manual. We're just supposed to figure it out through trial and error and finding valuable support and ideas along the way. I'm Lindsay Thompson. I was raised in the family business going on three generations now. At first, I was not interested. In fact, when I went to college, the most rebellious thing I did was refuse to take any business classes. Instead, I earned a master's in counseling and became a therapist in private practice. I fell in love with owning the business. 10 years later, I bought a fitness franchise. And after tripling and selling it, I transitioned to the franchisor side as a business coach. This is where I learned that I loved working with entrepreneurs as much as I loved being one. This is also when my temper tantrum ended and I went back to school for a doctorate in business psychology. Now, looking back at my experience from family business to buying, building, and selling my own businesses and a passion for research behind business and entrepreneurship and psychology, I love sharing what I've learned so far. In fact, I learned that even though there isn't an instruction manual for us entrepreneurs, we can grow a very successful business by understanding and applying the information from incredible business leaders and research-backed theories. So today, I want to share the most effective business intelligence behind how you can view your business, your team, and yourself in order to grow a great company. Now, you're probably going to recognize some of the information that I plan to share with you today, but we're going to take it to a new level by weaving it all together and putting it into best practices. And at the end, I'll provide a list of my favorite resources in case you want to dive further into certain areas. So let's begin with how you perceive and operate your business. One of my favorite business authors is Michael Gerber and his book, The E-Myth. I really liked his area that he talked about business owners having three personas, an entrepreneur, a manager, and a technician. The entrepreneur controls and plans for the business's future. A manager solves the past problems and manages processes, and the technician performs the day-to-day -day tasks. Now, we're supposed to be in the entrepreneur role the majority of the time. But Mr. Gerber's research found that entrepreneurs usually only stay in that role 10% of the time. And 20% of the time, we stay in the manager role, leaving 70% of the time in the technician role. Now, I admit to getting sucked into the technician role more than I should have. In fact, it took trusting my team to perform their jobs for me to stay in my own lane. One way to help us to stay grounded in the entrepreneur role is to remain connected to our why. Why did we go into business? Why did we choose a particular industry or a product or service? Our why and passion go hand in hand. If we lose sight of our why, it can actually lead to stress and burnout. There really is a difference between what we do and why we do it. The why promotes focus innovation, and a willingness to adapt and overcome challenges. This past year heightened the stress for many entrepreneurs. Staying grounded in why helped many people to see new ways to do the what. For example, many restaurants found new revenue streams like beverages to go and pre-planned dinner packages. Chipotle transitioned from walk-in services to drive-through lanes, which they called Chipotle lanes. They actually launched over 100 Chipotle lanes, which allowed them to hire even more people. You also might have noticed that a number of gyms very quickly pivoted to virtual classes and they emailed training schedules and at-home training packages just to maintain business. If you need to explore your why, I highly recommend the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Now, here are two additional best practices to help you stay in the entrepreneur role and allow your why to transform your business. First, goals and strategies. It's true what they say, what gets measured does get managed. Identify both long and short-term goals. 
A long-term goal should take the entire year. Break that up into quarters and short-term goals. Interestingly, research suggests that stretch goals actually help us to attain more of our short and long-term goals. It's because we're focused on something even bigger than us. Stretch goals are just outside our reach. Jim Collins, the author and business researcher, calls this the BHAG, Big, Hairy, Audacious Goals. Now, if you're highly motivated, outline your goals and strategies yourself. But I recommend using a structured process to guide you. One would be Traction by Gino Wickman. Now, if you need accountability, I recommend hiring a consultant for guidance. This person is going to hold you accountable to ensure that your goals actually come to fruition. Second, have a problem solving process, something that helps you to identify, address, and overcome speed bumps because we know entrepreneurship and business ownership has them. Include this process in your quarterly, re quarterly goal review and constantly explore areas of concern. Then identify and track the obstacles and the solutions. One of the biggest problems I see as a business coach is owners not facing problems. Pushing problems under the rug only leads to bigger problems and it's a tripping hazard. These two best practices can help you stay in the entrepreneur role and not get stuck in the weeds. But we can't do it alone. We need people. We know that we need a team. So first, let's explore how you view your team and employees. Are you grateful and willing to support and invest in them? Or are you usually frustrated because they aren't performing well? Now, you probably already know this, but our team's performance is our responsibility. We need to build out the processes for training and support so people rise to their best selves. A great team truly is a competitive advantage, but it's up to us to build it. So let's explore some ways to develop high functioning teams that help grow our business. You've probably heard the wonderful quote from Jim Collins, get the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus, and the right people in the right seats. But how do we best do that? Well, one way is with a quarterly organizational chart review. Now, there are plenty of free online software systems to build out an organizational chart. You're going to want to include your employee's name, job title, their tenure, and how much they're making, either salary or hourly wage. Next, use a scale like above meeting or below expectations to, in, in, to explore certain areas like communication, their teamwork, how they show leadership, and achieving specific results to your business. Next, identify a developmental plan for each person and reassess a few months later for progress. If somebody is a high performer, identify a plan to challenge, advance, and to retain them. We all want to keep great employees. Now, if somebody's average or lower performing, determine what the person needs. Ask yourself this really important question. Is this person struggling with a skill set or a mindset problem? Skill set solutions could look like helping somebody to better understand computers and technology or communication practices or becoming more organized. Mindset solutions might look like helping somebody to go from defensiveness to curiosity, procrastination to planning, or blaming to an accountability mindset. Now, if performance continues to be a problem, then use your problem solving process that we identified earlier and know the difference between coaching somebody up and coaching somebody out. After letting somebody go, I way too often hear people say, I wish I would have done that sooner. Keeping people on the bus who need to be coached out only lead to bigger problems. Usually other employees see the problem and it actually impacts your culture and trust. So speaking of coaching up, let's talk about you as a leader and hopefully you don't need to be coached out. We can all benefit from optimizing our leadership development. So how do you perceive yourself as a leader? Are you a humble leader in lifelong training 
or already established with a certificate on the wall? Well, let's explore what leadership is and isn't. Leadership is not a title or a corner office destination. Just because you are a CEO or an owner does not automatically qualify you as a leader. Leadership is a mindset, it's action. Our leadership mindset sets the culture and actually impacts the type of people who are attracted to our business, employees and customers. I have two best practices about continuous leadership development for entrepreneurs that are summarized from research and proven strategies. The first is self-awareness is key to our leadership growth. Brene Brown outlines two types of leaders in her book, Dare to Lead, armored leadership and daring leadership. Armored leadership is about knowing and being right where daring leadership is about being a learner and getting it right. Without self-awareness, we can fall victim to armored leadership. This is where we subconsciously protect ourselves and just blame others. This relates to our earlier concept and how we perceive our team members. If we get frustrated at other people's behavior, then it's likely that we are not taking accountability. That makes us less likely to see how we can make a positive difference in our team and our business. Embracing daring leadership helps us stay in the learning journey and take responsibility for optimal changes in our business. It's important to note that how we view ourselves and act as a leader is not black or white. In fact, we fluctuate based on our momentary perception of our performance, other people's feedback, and sometimes just a bad day. Working with a business coach or a business psychologist can help you increase your self-awareness and optimize how you think and act as a leader. In addition to increasing self-awareness to impact you as a leader, my second recommendation is to develop trust. Entrepreneurs work tirelessly to build and grow a concept from a vision. Therefore, it's common for some entrepreneurs to not trust others with our company. This relates to our first concept by Michael Gerber in his book, The E-Myth. To relinquish the reins of the technician role and from being stuck in the business, one needs to trust others to perform their role. This allows us, the entrepreneur, to fulfill the leadership role. Trust is actually one of the most common elements found in business and leadership research over the last few decades. Trust impacts our business cultures, relationships with teammates, connection to customers, and the overall brand. So how do you perceive trust? Is it an important element of business and leadership? Or is it one of those fluffy awesome. things? Awesome. Thank you so much. How Lindsay. has trust or mistrust uh, I, um, impacted you personally? Just asked again in the chat if there are Lots any questions. Lots of life events um, can distort our perception of trust uh, from for childhood everybody's information, to adulthood. Uh, called book the reps. impact can lead an uh, entrepreneur so you, to trusting um, too much look at those book and getting burned. Again, uh, or trusting too the little PNG you shared, and holding right, onto the reins mm -hmm. so right. much that people Perfect. don't feel valued um, in our business. Let's see. Uh, in addition see to our maybe a question popping up here in the chat, trust um, so in general I just has actually give everybody declined. time that if they uh, this have includes a question, our trust uh, in the media, government, now. and um, business. In between so the that, of the story I just is wanted to share my contact information too. From the foundation. So uh, if and you want to get in touch with Lindsay within our business. or you have a question about Grow Nebraska, feel free to reach so out as a leader, to me too and I can how connect are you guys your or behavior you answer a question about Grow Nebraska. So uh, my phone number I have three and my email address are to optimize how others view uh, you if anybody as a trusted wants leader. to reach out. Um, First, Oh, build a that wasn't a question, it was just a strong uh, relationship. Uh, leaning this on the keyboard. asking for um, and providing so no honest worries feedback. there. Um, Staying in touch with issues. Yeah, so and just wanted to make sure, though, that uh, nobody had any and questions. And again, if you do, when it or if you're watching this recording, and These things uh, you want to reach out, uh, that's the under the avenue surface, that you can actually do that through. Trust. Um, anything Second, else you want to add today, Lindsay? open and transparent. No, thank you so much for having me. As entrepreneurs, we know the only thing constant in business 
is change. Yeah, no, I am. So it's important to explain the so thank you so much for sharing today. Behind I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. Adopt them. Everybody have a great Thursday. And uh, if you enjoyed this training session, uh, be sure to check out Ronnebraska.com under the training tab. We've got committed. more webinars coming now, longevity next month is really for you. Here. So and uh, check those out. We'll be covering. I'm really excited. The most We're actually uh, having one on Instagram. I know a lot of people feel a little intimidated by that. So if you want to learn more about that, or uh, any other topics so how do you that we'll build be trust talking about using soon. Consistency uh, just and keep checking that training tab. If you're a leader you can sign of a new webinar, and we'll have those on the third and we'll fourth Thursday of the month, just like example. this. So uh, thanks again, Lindsay, for and sharing we'll with talk. us today. And thank you to everybody now, there who are tuned in. I will see you soon, hopefully. That can backfire and lead to Great. mistrust. Thanks, everybody. And they're both related to when we stay too committed to something rather than accepting an end. There are two ways that this can happen that can lead to mistrust and sometimes the demise of a business. First, not allowing for evolution. I'm gonna use my family's business for an example. Before we began introducing technology into the business, the original team used carbon paper to make manual copies, and we rented a phone from the phone company. Now, these were common practices in the 70s, but soon became outdated as time went on and, efficiency and efficiencies were identified. Learning when to upgrade rather than to be consistent just for consistent sake is vital. For us, change and accepting technology evolved the company and it showed employees that the business was able to adapt as needed. The second consistency landmine is testing new solutions without assessing and adapting. Now it's great to test new ways, but what happens when a new process or program isn't proving out? When do you know to let go? As a leader, explore why you're staying committed to something. Is it ego? Trying to save face? Does the idea just need to be tweaked and tried again? Staying committed to something for too long that isn't working can reduce trust. Now this can be corrected or avoided by accepting feedback while the new solution is being tested. Follow this, listen, learn, and repeat. Both of these landmines are reasons to ensure your business has a problem solving process built into quarterly reviews, which we talked about before. Well, I hope that you appreciated my summary of some of the most effective intelligence behind the best ways to view your business, your team, and yourself. I also hope that you gleaned a few strategies to incorporate into your business planning, your team development, and your own leadership journey. Now, as promised, I wanted to share some resources from my favorite business researchers and authors, so I'll do that next. Thanks for listening today. I wish you and your business the absolute best.